Ta-da! What's up, guys? All right. Genesis chapter 24. So, you know, if you guys missed my, like, afternoon Genesis 24 beginning, I hate saying this, but I feel like you didn't miss much. You know, the, the, the internet was cutting in and out. And, and so I just, I don't know, that kind of put a quench on the spirit, at least for me. But, you know, we did talk a little bit about how, you know, God is sending a, an unnamed servant to fetch a bride for his son or Abraham, right? Sends this unknown servant to fetch a bride for his son. And ever since that son was offered up on Calvary, he kind of disappears. His name is not mentioned until the end of 24 when Eleazar, the helper, prepares a bride for him. There's a beautiful picture in that where the son goes away after being sacrificed up on Calvary. And then we have the helper working to gather together a chaste white virgin bride for his son. So, and we made it all the way up to verse 15 where Eliezer was praying, you know, it happened before he had finished speaking that God answered his prayers. And Isaiah 65, 24, before they call, I will answer and I will, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Just how God always knows what you need. And he'll set things up for you to show you what he needs to show you, to make evident, you know, here's what you needed to see. And God works all things to the good. He, he will create situations, scenarios, and he'll give you an opportunity to grow, to learn, to change from those situations. And so something you kind of just need to settle in your heart now is literally everything you will face today Every positive interaction and every argument, every frustration, they're all opportunities to become more like Jesus, to become more full of the Holy Spirit. There are opportunities for you to say, okay, Lord, what do I do? You know, how would Jesus respond in this scenario? Or you could even say, what would Jesus do, right? And you could wear it on a bracelet and have a t-shirt and a bumper sticker that way you never forget. But verse 16, longest chapter of Genesis. Let's just keep chugging along a little bit here. Now, the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And a servant ran to meet her and said, please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. And she said, drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down in her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Verse 19 right there. We mentioned uh, a yeah, day before yesterday how camels will drink five to ten gallons of water. So, I mean, I'm going to feed your camels, you know, drink until they quit drinking. That's a lot to drink. So, uh, she's not just, you know, offering up a little bit of service. She's offering up a lot of bit of service. And I don't know, it's just, once again, a good reminder. It's really easy to give God, to, it's easy to give to God when it's easy. It's easy to give to God when it's convenient. I mean, if there's nothing else in my schedule, maybe I'll make it to an extra church service this week. You know, as long as I this, this, and this, then maybe I'll serve. And, you know, I mean, at the end of the month, if all the bills got paid and there's something left over, hey, we can give a little extra to God or we can give to the Lord anything at all. And it, it is, it's, it's just that reminder that there's a mentality that we have these days. And I, I really want to push the issue a bit to say, I have it. And therefore, I, I think you do too. Most, not all actually, but many of the people who listen to this um, are from America. And I, I think it's a worldwide thing, but I think the affluence of America, I think we are so much more selfish and self-centered than we ever really give ourselves credit. That as long as things are, you know, easy enough, then we'll do, then we'll help, then we'll go. And it's just that reminder. And again, I'm, I'm telling you guys, with God's help, he continually is showing me how selfish and self-centered I am. And I quasi-humbly feel like I'm not the bottom of the barrel 
when it comes to selfishness. I don't feel like I'm the, the worst of, of, of all believers when it comes to selfishness and self-centeredness. I, I think I'm maybe average. Maybe I'm better than average. But even if I'm just average, average. Well, that means that everyone's struggling with this. And the real question is, is I don't know, are we recognizing when I make my decisions, how much our decisions are based off of is, I don't want to give the time. I don't want to make the effort. How dare they interfere with my schedule? I mean, that's the idea of this, this selflessness we see in Rebecca. That was what he was looking for. Now look at that. The helper is looking for a bride worthy to give to his son, to the, to the master's son, right? That's what the helper's looking for. And, and he's going and he's searching. I, I want to find someone worthy, a bride worthy of the son. And so he puts a fleece out before the Lord, our Gideon terminology, right? He, he puts a challenge out there. And it wasn't a little one. He's like, I want to find someone who's not only going to serve me, but is going to serve the camels. Has anyone ever worked with a camel? I haven't. But you know who has? My wife. And she hates camels with a passion because she had to ride one. And for whatever reason, she got the camel. There's all these camels over here. They're hanging out, you know, camel talk. And there was one camel off by itself. And they're like, that's your camel, Nicole. Yeah. It was a mean camel, but you can see they, they're smelling, they bite, they spit. They, and she just said, yeah, you know, it's not that fun of an experience. Regardless, find me someone who's going to draw up water, eight pounds a gallon, a five gallon bucket weighs 40 pounds on who knows how long of a rope to give one to two of those five gallon buckets, if that's how big a bucket was, right? To each camel that Eliezer had. Now, remember how wealthy Abraham was? I don't assume he sends his servant off to find a bride for his son because he's going to bring gifts and stuff, right? So it's, it's not just a camel. So what was the helper, the comforter, the unnamed servant? What was he looking for in a bride worthy of the son? He was looking for someone selfless. He was looking for someone who was willing to serve, not prompted to serve, not coerced to serve. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry, I'm reading Enrique's comments. So this is actually a trip to Africa she did before we were married with the camel thing, and she just got the short straw on that one. But regardless, that, that's, that God is looking for someone who just wants to serve wants to be selfless, not twisting arms, not threatening, just, man, I just want to be used by God. And if God opens doors in front of me, I'm going to assume that they are for me to walk through. When I see places, positions, and possibilities where I can be used to minister to the body of Christ and to minister to my brothers and sisters, I just want to walk through those doors. That is the kind of person that he found in her. Notice, and I'll just read two more verses to kind of finish the paragraph for today. It, it, that, notice it says then, verse 20, then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And so it is. He's just looking at her. He's like, I think this might be the one. Look at her. She's serving. She's running. That's what I was looking for for the son. Because the father is an amazing master. And he has his one and only begotten son whom he loves dearly. And my job is to find a bride worthy of that son. And so this is who he looks for. Servants. I don't know. I think I'm going to wrap up this live stream. And I think there's a good Shane and Shane song about having the heart of servants. I might go listen to that and just take a minute to chew on it. After I find my place and put my bookmark back in. Don't you hate that? You close your Bible and you look and your bookmark's not where it's supposed to be. Oh, life's tough. Okay, there we go. Hey, God bless you guys. Have an amazing Saturday. 
and I will be seeing you guys uh, Monday morning live or Sunday morning if I see you at the Revival Church, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. God bless you guys.